Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Next week is just about the one year anniversary of the series and we thought we should really do something special. No, really, we really should do something special for a year. How about we have a competition? Yeah, right, so put a short sound file into the news channel on our Discord and the one I like the most can be next week's intro. Nothing stupidly long though, I won't listen to it. Right then, now that's over. Probably the biggest news this week is actually news that happened just before we uploaded 7 Days of Science last week, so I just missed it. I'm sure many of you would have heard that NASA's Opportunity rover was officially pronounced dead after months of silence. Oppie was originally expected to last for a minimum of 90 days and to travel just 1 kilometer. However, the rover managed 45 kilometers over a course of 14 and a half years, a record for any non-Earth vehicle. One of the things that many people have clung onto during the reaction to this is the apparent final message of Oppie. My battery is low and it's getting dark. While this is not the actual message it sent in June and more of a poeticised version, it is basically the message that the rover was transmitting. Some very serious news has also occurred this week that does not bode well for the future of our planet. A small rodent that inhabited an island near Papua New Guinea, the Bramble K. Melamis, has become the first known mammal to go extinct due to anthropogenic climate change. The tiny islands it lived on, which was not even 3 metres above sea level, meant its habitat was very vulnerable to changes in sea level and the frequencies of weather events such as tropical storms. The mammal actually hadn't been seen alive since 2009, but before confirming its extinction, a lot of evidence had to be gathered. Now the Australian government has officially listed this animal as extinct. As Professor Ben Garrod says, this is not a big, iconic or sexy species, but this is important. It's the first mammal to be declared extinct due to human-caused climate change, and we shouldn't really let this go unnoticed. So there's been quite a lot of cool paleontology news this week, and therefore in an effort to cover them all we won't be saying too much about each one, but remember that links to the articles and papers are in the description if you're interested in learning more. Firstly, Megalodon, everyone's favourite prehistoric killer fish, is definitely extinct. New research has re-evaluated a data set of Megalodon occurrence in the fossil record, finding that the shark actually died out about 3.51 million years ago, earlier than the previously estimated 2.6 million years ago. The study also suggests that oceanographic changes and competition with the Great White could have resulted in the creature's extinction. Next, a new dinosaur from the late Triassic of South Brazil has been named. Meet Naldurum Walsange an animal that has been determined as one of the earliest theropod dinosaurs, possibly representing the oldest example of these animals from Brazil. There's also been a new Titanosaurian sauropod named this week from the Cretaceous of Tanzania. Helping to fill in the history of early evolution of titanosaurs in Africa, this dinosaur also has tail vertebrae that are heart-shaped, inspiring its Swahili name which means Animal of the Matuka with a heart-shaped tail. More Cretaceous animals were described this week too, with a paper published on an ancient marsupial relative that was found in rocks in Alaska. This animal would have inhabited a region well above the Arctic Circle alongside dinosaurs that have also been found there, and appears to have thrived since a large number of fossils of the species have been found. This discovery adds to the context of the ecology of the region and is the northernmost record of any marsupial relative. And finally, a new genus and species of Dogon gene has been named this week, discovered in 20 million year old rocks of the Panama Canal. This animal is the oldest record of a Cyrenian from Central America, and features of the skeleton suggest it was adapted to uprooting deeply buried seagrass. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. If you enjoyed it and you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you do, we'll see you on Sunday.